Hi, I'm Niche Crafts, and this is Monster Bash. Monster Bash is a collaboration between a bunch of awesome artists, hosted this year by my friend Taryn over at Conjured Craft. So how does it work? Each person draws six random cards with monster parts on them. Whatever you get, you use that to make a monster. It can be any medium you want. 3D, 2D, digital, sculpture, kit bash, anything goes. Let's draw some cards. We got a really lumpy looking multi-armed corrupted mutant orc situation. I think that's what we got. All right, that's good. We can deal with that. I really liked my initial instinct, so I drew up a quick concept sketch. I combined the orc card with this card so something gross would be exploding out of his mouth. I interpreted this card as a Nurgle belly mouth, also exploding out some weird stuff. Instead of beefy orc arms, I was inspired by this card to give him long, lanky arms. And I interpreted this one pretty literally to just be three legs. I thought the design could look a little more mutant, so I gave him some tusks protruding out of his middle, as if his sharpened ribs tore out of his body. Gross. The chains are just going to be chains, but this is where the narrative really started to develop. I decided that this orc was a prisoner of a cult of Nurgle. They experimented on him over and over again until he finally succumbed to Nurgle's corruption, becoming this horrifying monstrosity. I like having something to build off when I sculpt, so I decided to steal the mouth from this beholder. I've worked with D&D minis enough to know that they are notoriously hard to cut. So I busted out my brand new Dremel and cut away everything that I didn't need. This will be the base for my monster. Since this is an orc inspired monster, I needed to replace these boring teeth with tusks. So I cut them off and replaced them with far superior teeth that I carved out of leftover sprues. Then I gave this cowboy some strutting legs. And to protect him from alien influence, I gave him a tinfoil hat. To further protect him and to bulk out his shape, I added more tinfoil. So here he is, all bulked out. Oh my god. Uh, uh. <laughs> I did not expect him to be so cute. What I'm gonna do next is bulk him out with some air dry clay just to give him a little bit more form. I'm gonna sculpt the details with green stuff, but I don't wanna waste all my green stuff bulking him out. And then I'll probably start sculpting the head separate from the body. All right. Oh, so cute. Let's go. This is Model Magic, a very cheap air dry clay. This step is similar to the tinfoil step, but the clay gives me a bit more control. I can rough out basic shapes here without worrying about the finer details. Once I was happy with the shape, I switched to green stuff. This is where the real work begins. I started by blending the mouth into the rest of the model. Then I gave it some new gums and some kissable lips. I made some rib tusks out of Sculpey off camera and then attached them in place here. I added some green stuff wounds to make it look like they tore out of his body and won't heal. And then I gave him some big ol' boobies. I continued building up the form, starting with a thin layer of green stuff. Then I would add lumps to represent the muscles and bones, finally blending them in. I continued this until he was looking... But it's not all about body yaddy yaddy. I need to make him an equally handsome face. I made him a rough armature out of wire and wood. Then I added some green stuff. 
I think it's a lot easier to create features by pushing and pulling the green stuff around rather than adding more to it. I find that it makes smoother, more realistic sculpts. I decided that inside the orc's mouth would be a bunch of eyeballs. The old eyes no longer work and the head is being completely repurposed for this new mutation. So I stuck a bunch of sculpy spheres into his gaping maw and then sculpted the teeth over top of the eyes. With his tooths in place, I started bulking out his thick neck. But mighty though his neck may be, it was still missing something. I made a collar out of a bit of plastic tube and some costume chain. Watch me realize in real time that I shouldn't have sculpted the neck before adding the collar. So I squeezed the collar around the still uncured green stuff, which actually created some realistic bulging skin folds, so no harm done. I wanted this collar to look absolutely stuck, like he outgrew it a long time ago and they couldn't remove it even if they wanted to. So I still haven't addressed what's coming out of the belly mouth. I knew right away I wanted it to be a bunch of faces, very Envy from Full Metal Alchemist. So let's see who's gonna get sacrificed. Magic at the Disco, Lumpy Bagman, Handsome Dad, and Little Susie. I added some green stuff to bind the mounds of faces together, gross, <laughs> then started sticking them in. Let's finish off the body. I bulked out the back with lots of tasteful folds. I kind of liked how the legs were looking already, but Model Magic is far too brittle to leave on its own. So I covered all the legs in a layer of liquid green stuff. This way I could add details on top without worrying what was left underneath. And I used a similar method for the hands, to keep the fingers nice and skinny. <laughs> I glued those hands in place using super glue and baking soda, and I'll add more details to them later. YouTube Analytics tells me that a good portion of my viewers are feet freaks, so here's a little something for you. Also like and subscribe. Finally, I get to start adding some finishing details, like his pointy orc ears and his many, many boils, each one lovingly blended into his body. It's important that all these finishing details are expertly put together. Fuck. Expertly put together. Close enough. And with the old ball and chain attached, it's time to add some ground cover. Now I know I'm not going to win any awards with this base. It's a simple mix of water, modeling paste, rocks, dirt, and paint. I spread that mix all over the base, and then to seal it all in, I slap on a coat of black Mod Podge. And with that, it's prime time. Like most crafters, I'm not the best painter. But I'm trying. This time I decided to try my luck with some contrast paint. I started with that Zenithal highlight, and then I brushed on some grey anywhere I thought it might be too dark. Then I threw on some Plague Bearer flesh over the whole thing just to see what it would look like. I'm not sure it gave me the desired effect, 
but it gave me a gross green to work from. Moving on, I painted the gums a fleshy pink. Then I painted the face mounds with red ink. This looks so gross, exactly what I'm going for. I painted what is gonna be metallic black first. Then painted all the many eyes white. Next, I started painting the boils. To begin, I used a thin coat of red around the boils to make it look like irritated, infected skin. And then I painted the boils with a coat of Averland Sunset. I added layers of lighter colors to the teeth to give them a varied, nasty, yellowish look. Then I went in with some cool greens for shadows and some brighter greens for highlights. I gave the orc's original eyes a milky bluish color to make it look like he couldn't use them anymore. Instead he uses his mouth eyes, which I painted green. Then I did a little dry brushing. I dry brushed some gray and white onto the ground and dry brushed some metallic onto the metal bits. As one final touch, I added some glossy Mod Podge onto his nasty bits to make him look a little wet. And with that, it's time for the glamour shots. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing. If you want to help me keep making videos, the best way to do that is to support me over on Patreon. And as always, no, no, not the mustache. Do you know how long it took to grow this? No, no, don't. God. And as always, let me know what you'd like to see me make next time. Bye. <laughs>